Let's bring in Scott Phillips from Motley Fool. Scott, good evening to you. What's your take on Fortescue? Does the fact it traded ex-dividend explain it all? Tomo, I think you've absolutely nailed it, and good evening. The dividend was almost 10% of the share price, if you can believe that. A really big payday for Fortescue shareholders. About $2.4 billion for Twiggy Forrest, too, by the way. So he's doing OK. And, yeah, the shares fell about the same degree as that, so nothing to worry about for shareholders. OK, now on the bright spots today, Healthco, an impressive market debut, up 16%. It was impressive. This is a health company, so private hospitals, insurance, uh, property REIT, effectively, or property trust, we used to call them. Basically, it owns the real estate on which the hospitals and other businesses do their business. Now, the health space has been particularly lucrative. If you're a property investor who's worried about whether we go back to the office, whether we go back to the shops, you're pretty sure hospitals are going to keep being used, and that was probably behind some of the gain today. OK, one of the companies you've recommended for late news viewers, Washington Soul Patterson, updated the market today. But there was a bit of a sell-off. A little bit, Tomo, yeah. Look, this was probably one of those cases where even good results aren't enough for a market that was expecting even better numbers. The company themselves pretty much said, look, we don't even use our profit as the measure of our own store of value. We look at the value of the assets we hold and the, and the equity portfolio, add that together. That's what we think the business is worth, but you need to know these are our profit numbers. That being said, and really good numbers, we should say too, by the way, just not quite good enough for what the market was expecting. Scott, data-wise, we got the first indication of the effects the lockdown is having on the job market. Yeah, they weren't pretty either, Tom. It really disappointing, these set of numbers. We were hoping for a decline, a moderate decline of maybe 0.3 or 0.5 of 1%, which would have been unwelcome but decent. The decline in the end was 2.5%. So there really is a concern that this ANZ job ad series is just showing exactly what's happening out there, which is businesses aren't hiring in the numbers we need them to be to keep people employed. Now, not businesses' fault, of course. Lockdowns will do that across much of the country. But unfortunately, those numbers nowhere near as good as we'd hoped. OK. Now, tomorrow, uh, we're going to get from the Reserve Bank on interest rates and economic stimulus. Yeah, there's not a lot of likelihood of a change to interest rates, of course, at 0.1%. They're as low as they go without the RBA really pulling out the bazooka and going to negative interest rates. No one's really sure how that pans out, and they really don't want to do that themselves. We may yet see some so-called bond buying where the RBA acts in the market to try and keep medium-term interest rates low. They said they want to do that. The question really will come down to how badly the RBA feels it needs to act. We know the economy's in a funk. We know it's got to dig itself out of a hole. Whether the RBA thinks it needs extra help, we'll find out tomorrow about 2.30 Eastern time. Scott, a holiday on Wall Street, but we've still got futures. How are they looking? Yeah, we do, and that's the good news we can finish with. The futures are currently up about a quarter of 1%. We won't have US trading overnight our time, but hopefully that's good news for when it does reopen tomorrow night. Got those fingers crossed. Scott Phillips, as always, thank you.